So what's going on, James? Are you taking audio? Yeah. I'm just waiting for Marvin, the courier man, and he's really upset me because he's late. I always had that collecting gene in me. My mum um, is an incredible kind of, I don't want to use the word hoarder, because I think that's a bit uh, rude, but she probably passed on the gene to me. I guess the main bug started happening when I was at MTV, when I was a script writer in the early 90s for MTV Europe. I saw an advert of someone selling all the Q magazines that had been, and obviously I didn't have them. So I meet this guy on some motorway like it's some dodgy drug deal and I buy all these cues and there they are beautifully with their spines on the wall. And I think, yeah. So then it starts going on to Empire, Select, Vox, all the mags about popular culture. I thought, I love it. I would say print is certainly still alive, but in the 90s, what a fantastic period. You know, this was very much pre-internet and desktop publishing eras. So you really had the power of those magazines. You had magazines like Face, ID Select, even when I'm looking at there, like The Idler, so much was coming through, Rolling Stone, Spin, Empire, Lowdown, G-Spot, people were publishing. Now it's so easy to publish on the internet. Everyone can have a Twitter feed, a blog, um, just instantly publish something. But you know, what I still find incredible about all this magazines is, you know, blood, sweat and tears went into that stuff. A lot of thought, a lot of Once energy. Got over six issues of any fight to collect your work and on to Terry, I'm not going to put that on the fire. So for all the obvious ones I had, like the Empires, the Faces, the Playboys, the Rolling Stones, you know, the source on hip hop, I liked also the, the fringe, the counterculture, the weird stuff. Everyone seems to pick up on this footsie the best foot fetish magazine in the world. As I said once before, I like to know about the other foot fetish magazines, if that's the best. Um, hacking magazines. This is the history of hacking, and it's relevant more than ever with all the Murdoch phone hacking stuff going on now. This is volume one, number one. And if I remember correctly, they printed, there we go, all the numbers from the White House, direct numbers and names. I'm currently finishing cataloging this whole collection and there's probably about 1200 at least different titles. I'm a completist. For me, you know, you're going to do something, you do it properly. Specifically on magazines, it's always about a complete run of something. So if I said to you, look, I've got one Playboy, that issue might be worth something. But if I said to you, I've got the whole set or I've got all the face magazines, then, you know, obviously that increases the value to a premium because you have that full run. Two words crop up a lot in sorting this stuff out. Epic and Herculean, as in a Herculean task. I thought this was going to be pretty quick, but bear in mind, you've got 450 crates that have come into a unit. They're not in order, so you're not going to have a crate of Empire, a crate of Playboy. You're going to have one Empire in that crate, one Idler, one George, one Source. They, they all needed to be sorted. There was a lot of doubles. Covers had to be taken off. Space we had to deal with. We had to file them. File them. Sometimes a magazine, to me, and a record can trigger more emotion than a photo. I could pick up that, you know, Rolling Stone, Jay-Z cover, and it would trigger so much of what I was doing, where I at, what I was eating, the smells, more so than a photo, and albums do that, yeah, the physical thing. And, you know, I say it again, digital is too easy. Teach the monkey whatever to type, that monkey can do it in one second. The, you know, the monkey couldn't have written the face magazine. Face magazine. I didn't do drugs. I didn't smoke, I didn't drink, I didn't buy a Porsche every week, or, you know, the other day someone said to me, he was in the doctors and someone was saying, oh, you know, coughing, couldn't, you know, talk properly, oh, I was spending seven grand a year on fags. What have you got? Rotten lungs, yeah? And you've probably spent the same as me in magazines. Now, I've had a lot of fun out of this, a lot of enjoyment. It is definitely reaching, you know, the next level, and I'm excited, I'm very pleased that it's not sitting like that Raiders of the Lost Ark scene, just in a warehouse, untouched, and unaccessible. Yes, James. Got it? Yeah. Well, they were stills, right? Oh, sorry. Oh, there's Mark.